six in this little damn thing. You did last week. They were tender, and the flavor was good. A little heat, not not too spicy. I did not like this one. It was my least favorite. It was too overdone and had more of a charcoal, lighter fluid type odor. My preferences were two and three. Three is this one that's obviously been eaten more. Uh, I think that the meat was done very well. The uh, you know it had a great flavor to it, and it was uh, you know tender, super taste, and you know, the kind of kind of meat I think that's got the potential to win the contest. My least favorite was uh, number four. Uh, it was dry, uh, tough, and and I, you know they it had a peculiar taste uh, you I couldn't quite taste the meat well so I um, gave it poor grades my favorite was uh, two and three it had good bite through skin uh, the flavor profiles were right on uh, very tender very juicy uh, just very good and very well cooked uh, my least favorites were four and five uh, four I couldn't even I had a difficult time even biting through the skin and then number five uh, when I bit the skin all the skin came off so those were definitely kind of tough to uh, uh, just weren't as good as the uh, number two and three. Uh, my favorite two were number two and number three. Um, number two had a really good flavor and, and tender. Number three, I think, had a, a little bit better flavor even maybe. And it was a bit tougher on the bite through. On the very bottom of it was tougher. Least favorite was number four. Uh, again, the tough to bite through and, and the flavor had something that was inconsistent with what I liked anyway, uh, a little bit bitter or citrusy or something. Um, other than that, good barbecue. Which nut kernel shit right there? Number one was my favorite, or excuse me, not my favorite. I felt it was overcooked, dry, although I like the, uh, the difference in sauce. It was bland. Number five, my favorite, quality of meat, tenderness and taste, spot on. Number one was the least favorite. It was uh, not cooked enough. It was rather tough and really had a bland taste to it. I thought the third one was the best as far as taste, tenderness, and appearance. And I would concur, number one, the meat would not come off the bone easily, uh, was not cooked properly. Uh, from a taste tenderness standpoint, I would say three and five were both uh, cooked very well and had nice flavor profiles. Well, uh, number one was my least favorite. Uh, very tough. Um, had the aroma of some sort of... Uh, like a lighter starter or some sort of fuel, just very unpleasant. Um, there was a real tough membrane on the back. It just just didn't make it. My favorite, I think, was the fifth one. Just a great marriage of uh, the succulent pork flavor with uh, the light taste of the uh, of the sauce. It just tasted great. My only knock on it was that the uh, texture was uh, just not quite up to par. All right. I think I heard him. Number one was kerosene taste and tough, so that was out. 
Number three was the best. It had a pork flavor, and it was properly cooked, and it wasn't too sweet and wasn't too spicy. Number four was very, very close, and number five was close. They were all very, very good. Well, I agree that number one was um, not good. It had a lighter fluid taste, and it was also <clears throat> tough. My favorite, I believe, was number three. It had a real good flavor, very tender, pull off the bone. I also liked four and five were both, both had good flavor profiles, and they were both pull off the bone also. They were good as well. So my uh, favorites were number one and number five. I found both of them to have a really true pork flavor, a nice balance of pork flavors and smoke. Um, number one, uh, the texture could have been a little bit better, but um, it's not bad. And number four was perfect in terms of uh, the texture is nice and juicy. My least favorite was number three. It had a line of fat um, running through it and um, that made it awfully chewy and um, not great on the tongue and the flavor was just okay. Um, I thought my best one was number two. It was, it was real tender and had a good flavor and my worst one was number one. It was just kind of dry and it didn't, didn't have much taste to it. Uh, I'm with uh, Mike. Uh, they were, uh, some of them had a lot of fat on them. Uh, number, four, number four and number five were so up. They were good. I'd say my favorite was uh, probably number two and number four. Five, um, basically because they had some good flavor, very tender, very juicy, very, uh, number five had a good sweet flavor to it. My least favorite was number three. Um, again, like some of the other comments, just a little bit too much fat to it, and uh, which really, I think, tainted the flavor on it a little bit. I like number four, uh, had good texture, uh, good flavor. Uh, it was literally the only one that could fold over without breaking, so I thought that was pretty good. Uh, number one was good tasting, but they cut it uh, about a half inch too thick. Uh, number three was the worst one. It looked 
not very good and it's too fatty and it was too salty. Um, number one here was very good in taste, a little bit overcooked. Number two here was very good, uh, cooked nicely, burn ends are good. Number three, lack of taste and a little bit of fat at the bottom, probably you could taste that more than you could the beef. Number four was really good, and number five is a little bit overdone. Uh, number one, uh, I actually really liked the flavor on number one. Um, tenderness wasn't quite there, but probably my favorite in terms of flavor. Um, the third one was my least favorite, uh, a lot of unrendered fat there. Um, fourth one, probably my overall favorite. Um, just, uh, you know, cooked well and uh, had good smoke flavor to it. Uh, number one was just too thick. Uh, There's a lot of fat on the bottom. Uh, number three had a real strong beef taste. Uh, that seems like they tried to use the uh, pepper to cover up. And number five was good, except uh, some of it was tender, but the uh, the crust was real, real tough. Okay, I thought number one and number two were kind of the same. Um, just a little bit thick cut, but uh, pretty good flavor. Number three, I thought was the that was my favorite one. Um, the the fat didn't render too well, but uh, but overall the, the flavor and the uh, the texture seemed to be good. Uh, number four was my least favorite. Um, the uh, slice was wonderful, but the burnt end had way too much sauce on it, and there was no beef flavor left in it at all. And uh, number five was just um, not so good. First of all, I'd like to thank all of you for being here, all the cooks, all the judges, organizers, sponsors, board members, everybody who works together to make GBC what it is, which is the premier series here in the state of Georgia for competition barbecue cooking. Heard that? And our sponsors, Landman USA, I don't believe is here today. Um, Big Frog, who provides us with all the cool shirts and, and hopefully more and more I'm going forward into 2015 with some neat GBC items for y'all. Royal Oak, who's hiding in the back. <laughs> Primo Grills. I don't know if the boys made it from the cook-off. They were cooking today. They made me sacked out in the, in the hotel. Um, Brasstown Valley Resort. Championship cook-off. 
And then the big dog, money-wise, is Evans, Papa Joe's Banjo BQ, for a $35,000 purse this year. Uh, they clarified that. It was actually supposed to be $35,000 last year, but they mixed up the, the back of it. Uh, Following that, June 5th and 6th is the contest that's close to my heart. That's the U Harley Covered Bridge Q. Yeah. I'd love to see you after that. And then another charter member, the premier contest in Georgia, 15, 16, 100 years. I don't know how long it's been going. Miss James, Dillard, Bluegrass, and Barbara Hughes. 19, 19. Not that she's 100. <laughs> August 14th and 15th, Athens, the Classic City Barbecue, comes back to this event. Followed by Kennesaw Pigs and Peaches, August 21 and 22. We've got a lot of back-to-back -back stuff going on in August, so you get them with Pigs and Peaches, it's right back out again to Gainesville for Harvard on Lanier on August 28th and 29th. That is a really cool contest. It's right on the lake. If you haven't been there, I highly recommend you check it out. Uh, Lions, the real squeal, down in South Georgia, October 9th and 10th. Lions is kind of a sleeper um, in that you won't have a huge field down there historically. They're, if you're looking to, to make points, that's probably good odds. So you can go down there and clean up while other folks stay home. I don't know why. Well, honestly, I've, I've been to the Lions event repeatedly. Um, I didn't cook there this last year, but I cooked the two previous years. It's a great show. Uh, it looks like you look on the map and you think, oh, Lions, that's, that's way down there. It's quick. You get down there in a hurry because it's nice and flat. It's not like going up to Tennessee in the mountains. There's no rocky tops in the way. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Kevin. November 13th and 14th, Chatsworth, Georgia, smoking up the saddle club. Sparky and Mitchell. And back again in the, the dead of winter is Calhoun, K smoking up the campground at the KOA, December 4th and 5th. That's going to be our closing event. And that's going to be chilly. <laughs> what a, a great contest. I always get a cabin up there and enjoy it when I cook there. And two late entries, late editions that are out of order, so I'm giving them to you out of, out of sync. In October, and this is a first for Georgia, the Smoke and Thunder Barbecue Classic in Rome, the air show, will be having back-to-back -back events. October 2nd and 3rd, and October 3rd and 4th. So it's a Friday-Saturday contest followed immediately by a Saturday-Sunday contest. You don't have to move. You can, one in, you can pay a single entry fee, you can get into the whole thing if you want, or just put one or the other half. Those of you who are chasing KCBS Team of the Year points, this is the opportunity to make a big cash all in one weekend. And those of you who have cooked the year show, it's, it's kind of cool. <laughs> you're, you're, you got your smoker running here and the plane going, 10 feet over there, so that's our, that's our schedule, um, 15 events in the GVC series for 2015, we think you're going to enjoy all these contests, and uh, we hope you'll cook absolutely as many of them as you possibly can. With that said, what I'd like to do is, uh, I'd like to give a minute for Scott, Scott Smith is actually going to be helping out both sponsoring and organizing that new Smoke and Thunder contest and let him come up here for a minute and tell you about it since it's something brand new that we've never seen a double contest like this in Georgia before. Thank you. The new uh, Rome Air Show we decided to do a double event this year. It'll be a Friday, Saturday, Saturday, Sunday, as Gavin said. You don't have to move your rigs. Um, we've got an awesome rep team in place that's in this room. Bill and Gavin, thank you. And um, we're going to do two contests with $10,000 payouts on Saturday, $10,000 payout on Sunday. 
We're also going to do an overall champion of that, uh, that weekend total points. It's going to be an additional $2,000. If someone comes in, you know, maybe third both days, I don't think a back to back's ever been won by a single team. But we're going to do an additional $2,000 payout for the overall grand of the two days. Uh, we're giving out 110 award, 111 awards in 48 hours. And uh, we're going to pay through 10 places in all four categories. We're going to play through 10 places in both overalls. And the overall grand of both days will be $2,000.